Hi guys, today we're going from a 50s car to a modern car. This template is in effect like a time travel machine. In four inches we've traveled over 60 years. By forming this up and creating the bands to accommodate the structure underneath, we're covering up the hinges, making it look neat, and transitioning to the curvature of the present day car. This is just a work in progress. It keeps track of every idea that has come across as we are fitting this into place. Okay, we're finishing up with a fresh template. There we go. Doesn't that look a lot nicer? The hinges are covered. We need to add a little piece on the bottom here. But otherwise, it matches up with the contours of the dash. It covers up the uh, openings at the top. It gives it a nice, clean, respectable look. Now we're going to take this and transfer this template onto As you can see, we've cut out that piece of sheet metal from the template and uh, the markings are on this side, but it's actually going to sit in there like that. You can see the body shape here and that inner curvature is right there. This will be folded over at the top. So we've got a bunch of... Okay guys, we have it just about finished. It's fit perfectly in the dash. It's followed the features of the dash here and it blended well, very well with the 50 Ford. We've left this as a raw edge because of the wiring plug that goes in here. Once that plug is in there, then we can finish this edge so that it matches the plug. Other than that, there's only one screw holding it and it's sitting in there nice. So I think we've accomplished what we set out to do and that was to travel from 1950 till today. Thanks for watching guys. Oh, hey guys, pardon me, figure I'd get a little block sanding in while I was waiting for you guys to arrive. Today, we're not going to be talking about the outside, we're going to be talking about the inside, the interior. Getting those panels established because it's just about as important as the final finish on the outside. We can't leave the inside just kind of haphazardly raw. Now before we go into handheld mode, I'm going to show you a little sketch here, or a couple of sketches, the progression of the interior panels. That's roughly what we're going to be doing with the interior. That's the door panel there, and that's going to extend from the front, obviously, to the back seat area. Nice continuous flowing lines. I don't want to get too complicated with the interior because, as I mentioned, we're kind of on a tight time frame, and if we start doing all kinds of crazy shapes and stuff, well, all that takes time. Okay, well, playing with our new camera here, too. So let me know if it's any better than a cell phone ransom video style. So there we go. Let me just steady myself here. So that there, you can see, is the Infinity's door panel. That's where the armrest was. We're going to 
kind of maintain the same height extending back into the uh, back seat area which as you can see is quite fitting up quite well uh, that's a sail panel always has to be trimmed back plenty of headroom when I jump in and what we need to do is take and cut away that armrest area the interior of the infinity comes short of the back edge of the 50 door that's fine we're going to have that top section there as an accent and basically take what we have down below, form up new pieces and blend them into the top section. Uh, that accent is going to end there. We might take a, do a sheet metal transition piece that tapers back further. Kind of a continuation of what we have on that. It would look probably better than just stopping it. We'll see. And then there's a trim molding that goes just below the door handle. It has some, um, I believe, memory um, buttons for the power seats and mirrors and stuff. So I want to retain that as well. So. I've bent up, uh, they're on the other side I believe, no they're right here actually, I've bent up some profiles. So that's going to be the armrest area and that's going to flow in uh, a bit too close but you guys get the idea all the way from the front to the back and fade off at the back and then we have a lower section that's going to join up to the door at the lower area, close all that in and again flow out to the back area. Uh, let's get some sheet metal out, start laying stuff out and see how far we can get in terms of forming up these new pieces. I'll probably cut off that armrest because it's going to be interfering with uh, the new pieces. Uh, I have scrubbed the line just about there and uh, we'll just chop that off. And oh yeah, the ceiling liner is in. It fits up with the front very well with the garnish molding. At the back there we have to create a garnish molding around the rear window, side window, and most of these pieces, that sail panel, that little filler right there, as well as the seat bottom, seat back, that's all infinity. So we want this to look like a seamless transition. We don't want to look like an afterthought. So hopefully we're successful with that. Okay, and what we have here is Infinity's door panel section, temporarily mounted onto the 51 door with a couple of screws. And what we need to do is get rid of this because it doesn't really work with what we have. We're too short here. We're gonna take and cut this off and work our sections up into, uh, into this top piece here. And we'll have to form up the new pieces in such a way that it covers up. We can't cover up the latch, but it covers up most of the other door areas. And uh, that should be it. So it's easy to kind of wave our hands around. Whole different thing to form it up with a sheet metal. But what we're going to start with is the armrest area because that's going to be the basis to which everything else is basically attached to. Uh, the armrest area, when you pull on it, you don't want the door panel coming off away from the door. You want to have a nice solid fixed area. The armrest is going to have a provision for the power windows, mirrors, all that stuff in the top. It'll be a stainless piece that's going to be, or brushed aluminum, we'll see, inserted into the top of the armrest for a nice classic look. The door panels from the 54 came from a much simpler time when you didn't have all these fun shapes going on. It's just a simple door card with an armrest that was attached to that and the handle for the door opening and window crank. Uh, possibly quarter vent, I can't remember how that worked, but it was a much simpler panel. We want this dash to extend into the doors just for that nice flowing look. And uh, a door card, if we just did a simple panel, there'd be a huge gap in here. You'd be able to see in there. Don't want that. So we'll just extend back using the existing panels. We have a door handle here as well as a speaker. So that'll work out quite well. It's just a matter of working up into it. Now this is kind of a leatherette or leather that they have attached to a fiberboard on the backside. What we'll do is peel this leather off and rewrap this section once it becomes part of the upper door, uh, door armrest area. And this we're going to leave alone. That's just a plastic. So we're okay with that. And there's a filler piece that goes in the front here that uh, completes that over there. So, all right. Um, Let's get some sheet metal out, start bending up those profiles. Okay, here's a profile we need to bend up for the armrest. We're gonna add a little more material here so it extends up, picks up the top, that piece that we just cut off. And this bottom portion is gonna be an overlap to engage with the lower section, uh, just for strength. Because if you just have a simple tab there, not much strength. Maybe do a contrasting color down the center where the armrest is, we'll see. So let's lay things out. Yes, I'm using my favorite Sharpie, green. Now, this is the tricky part. 
let's get a more flexible tape measure. I didn't want to unbend this to figure out the lengths, so we're just going to run the tape measure up and around and get a length. We're not building a spaceship here, so if I'm off by a sixteenth of an inch, that's okay. Uh, five and five eighths, and we're going to add, say, three quarters. The reason why this little area is depressed down, I'm not sure how I'm going to bend it yet. Maybe put it through the tipping wheel. I want the stainless or aluminum brushed aluminum piece to sit within a recessed area. So that's about the trickiest part we need to do with this, uh, with this section. So see how that goes. And that area there is you know, two and a half inches. Two and a half. And that one, what did I say? Four and a half? length of this is 61 inches long. To save time, a little bit of pre-measuring and pre-design work off camera. Of course, we're going to need two pieces of this. Could have oil on it, and I don't want to introduce that to the bodywork. Kind of a not a good thing when you're mixing. Metal work with block sanding, but uh, we're kind of tight on space. All right. I'll show you a little trick to transpose all these marks onto the next piece. Uh, it's going to save you a bunch of time and uh, be accurate as well. Let's do some cutting. That's a piece number one. That's piece number two. And what we'll do is transfer these little marks onto the sheet underneath using a center punch. You don't want to drive your punch through the table, just enough to leave a little divot. A 
that's it. Let's see if they showed up. Yes, they did. Let's bring you guys in, show you what's going on. Now, one thing I would do is I'm gonna take and flatten out all the little divots we created in this panel because I don't want any bumps. He just kind of throws the surface off. Okay, so I'm gonna peel this back or pick this up and you can see little divots there, hardly visible, but that's all you need. And then we can just take and mark them. You can probably see that a little better. Do, 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 there and there. And the beauty of this is I don't need to flip the sheet over and remark everything. I can see where the little divots are. So when I'm flipping the sheet forward, back, upside down, whatever way in the break, I can see both sides basically at the same time. Cut off one more. Oh, that was close. I think we're done with this. Ooh, that was close. Let's put it over here. That's it. Now, we had a bit of a S curve, very lazy S here. You see that lazy S? Actually probably, yeah, that, that way for you. So we have a lazy S that we have to create and I'm gonna try doing that in the break without uh, bending it over a pipe anvil or something like that. And just by rolling this around, I need to figure out where to start my bends because I don't want to trap myself uh, in terms of getting the sheet in or out. If we bend the end up, we might not be able to get in to get these two bends here. So what I'm going to do is start with this offset bend in the break. You're probably wondering how in the heck I'm going to do that. I'll show you. Then we'll move on to this bend, create the lazy S, followed by, yeah, this one here, the bottom little corner, and then the final flange upward. I think. We'll see. Uh, if we mess it up, we've got one more sheet over there. Now the trick of this is, is which way is going to be up, which is going to be down. <laughs> okay, so that's a three quarter inch side. So this piece is sitting like that. That's got to bend down. Um, hum, hum. So we need to bend the inside of that first. Take the sheet, flip it around, and then bend the top side of that little bend. And hopefully, that creates our offset. Now, we're not gonna mess this up because we can always take and move this on the other side of the car and use it over there, as long as we make the second one in the opposite direction. Come on. Do we put it upside down? Eh, it sits better that way, but... I'm afraid we might make an upside down armrest, so. There, stay. Now I want this bending edge to be as close to the front as possible. I need a very sharp. a little while ago I bent up the rockers for this car 
and you guys want to see how it was done. Uh oh. All right, let's go not quite 90. I think that's 87 degrees right there. 87 and a half. Got to count for the spring back. Whenever you bend a piece of sheet metal, you have to go a little bit past where you have to be because the metal will spring back on you. That's what spring back's all about. It's not a dance move, you know. Oop. We can leave this one locked. We can leave this one locked. And get this one in. Yeah, that's the tricky part right there. And that's what I was talking about. However, uh, yeah. Sometimes it helps on a longer piece to have two people. You on the couch, come here and give me a hand, please. Uh, actually, never mind. Go back to your beverage. Uh, we're okay here. Sometimes you got to hold one end in because when you push, I'm out of breath. When you push that end in, this one will jump out, but we got it. So there's the offset right there. This is level with the piece that's in the underneath the brake there. Care to pass me a beverage? All right, so now that we have that offset created in the panel for the trim that we're gonna be placing in here afterwards, I'm gonna go ahead and create this outside edge. Now this one's a bit sharp. I'm gonna back the fence off so we can create a nice soft, nice soft bend. And uh, it'll be easier on the ribs when you're going through the corners. The reason I back the fence off is I want, like I said, a soft radius. And if we have it up too close to the bending edge, it's gonna create a sharp radius. So backed it off, we're gonna place the line halfway in between our mark, and then we'll take and just very gently bring it up. We have to be careful because it naturally wants to bend on that edge. I'll show you. See, that's what we want right there. Good. What we do on one side, we gotta do on the other side, so. We'll have to remember all these steps. That's good. This is the five digit bending method. A little bit of tension, and we got to bring this up about 90 degrees. Let's see how that looks. Not too bad, a little much. Let's, it's a little bit too sharp, so let's unfold this a bit and uh, it should be good.
This top edge will be taken care of later on. We'll be trimming a lot of it away because of the taper on the door. So it'll probably be wider at the back, less at the front. Like I said, not a concern at the moment. However, to get the next step in, we need to get rid of some of this material. So we're going to take and create the bend, this bend here. Oh, that's a much nicer bend radius. So let's move the fence again. if it was a motorized drive, that'd be cool. Push a button. Good. Uh, da -da. Okay, let's get our feeler gauge out and uh, check both ends, make sure that they are good. Yes, they are, okay. Good, good, good. Now for the tricky Lazy S. See, with this material out of the way, we can now clamp this down. Uh, I need one more mark. Just... See, we're progressing nice, nicely around here. Compared to the template. Now, because that's softer, things have moved a little bit, but there you go. All right. So now for the second portion of that Lazy S. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so we've flattened out that little, it wasn't a pinch, but it was just a little too abrupt. Now we can move on to the two bottom bends and get those taken care of. So the bottom flange basically, we have to bend from the inside up inside up. And that's going to be a sharp bend. You have to know your brake. Like I knew I couldn't bend all this down here without bending this first. So look at that. That's going to be the armrest. Like it feels really good. Unfortunately, I can't put my arm on it to show, like to feel it, because it'll rust right away. Okay. So one more bend to create the flange. All right, 
right, final bend. Hopefully we can get it in. This is gonna be a bit tricky, but because of the lazy S, it helps us get this panel in. Haha, <laughs> success, almost. Stay put. Make sure both are good. And let's bring it up, bring it home. And there we have one armrest, which we will have to make cut into two later on. There we go. So not exactly like our template just yet. We have a little more curvature in it, but we can make those adjustments right now. Yes, I could have made up a die for a reciprocating hammer to, to do this and run it through. But a few minutes with a simple break. Not quite. There we go. Got to put your weight into it. I drink more beer. Okay. There we go. So I think we can leave it at that. Give it a little bit of a hug. You know, I really love metal shaping. There we go. Now we can go fit this in the car and see how it goes. All right, so just to show you guys how much room we have back here, I'm gonna just jump in and this line here, I don't know if you guys can see it, but that's where the armrest is gonna sit. Um, it's pretty comfortable back here. I'm not touching the back glass, I am touching the headrest, so that's good. And uh, of course, armrest over here. But anyway, um, I'm gonna bring you guys in. Once I get this piece more or less fitted in place, that means bringing the door shut, latching it so it doesn't keep swinging open. Uh, probably take off the top, I'm not sure yet. But uh, we're gonna get this in place, feel it out, see how it goes, and then keep going from there. Supper time. All right, guys. So as you can see, we've got this armrest door panel, back panel section, mounted on a few screws, just mocked up to see how it looks. And it's not looking too bad. Um, we're gonna have to make a cut in this area so we can actually open the door. But the cut has to be very precise. Because of the depth of the armrest, I want a nice continuous flowing line all the way through, which adds to the depth of the door. We have to make our cut here at the front and a bit of an angle, kind of like a bevel. Uh, reason why, as you swing the door open, we don't want this point here hitting the door jam. <laughs> Can't open the door then, right? So, figured it out, the swing of the door, based on the swing of the door, how far ahead that has to be. Basically, you used a piece of sheet metal with a red angle bent on it, swung the door open, and saw where this point is gonna end up through the radius. And as it turns out, it has to be right there. Uh, any further ahead, uh, it'd be hard to get into the back seats. And too far back, well, obviously you can't open the door. So, what I'm gonna do is unlock our door with this here. Because I have a few screws holding the front here. There are one screw here and one over there. Like that. And there we go. So we have to make a cut here, slide this ahead, about three eighths of an inch, probably half an inch, just to make sure we have enough room between the doors so that when these panels are upholstered and the trim goes on, we don't have an issue of binding. That's, again, we won't be able to open the door. It's crucial. So we're gonna take this panel out, cut it in half, and remount everything back in the car. 
And as for the lower section, we're going to need to form that up and attach it to this upper section uh, once this is mounted on the door. So this is the base baseline that we're working from. Uh, the upper section, this will be trimmed away later on. We have to take and blend the Infinity's door panel section into this one here. Uh, kind of like a hybrid of door panels, if you will. Can never have too many tape measures. Hmm. Okay, so let's go cut this. Doesn't that door sound good? Didn't that door sound really good when it closed? The whole car sounds like a drum now, which is a very good thing. So compared to the very first time when you saw it in episode one when everything was just kind of like a loosey-goosey jalopy, we're getting there. Uh, it just takes time. So we're gonna get this rear armrest mounted in place, get the front one mounted in place, and then we'll go ahead and get the bottom of the door mocked up. Okay. It's a little tricky to get in here and not block the camera, so hopefully you guys can see. Oh! This waviness up here, that's gonna be taken care of. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of detail work yet, but I just wanna get all the panels roughed in on the interior. Uh, let's get the front one on. Where'd you go? All right, so the width of the uh, zip blade is about a 16th, heavy 16th. Uh, we need to increase that a bit more. So what I'll do is, I'll just take, mount this where it needs to be, where we had it. I need, yeah, that'll work, that's fine. Good. Two screws, and we'll get ourselves a level mark, right there. And a witness mark that way. And a witness mark, witness mark over there. We'll slide it ahead half an inch, heavy half an inch. Good. And then we'll take, move everything ahead, re-screw it in place. That'll allow us taking blank off the ends, create an end cap, do all that stuff. Got the level right, but this level's wrong. I just screwed that into the door. This has to be spaced out. So we're gonna put the screws, the two screws, back in the front and let the back come out to where it needs to be. We'll create a spacer and uh, basically block this in this position here. Okay, how does this look? Look at that, bingo. So we have our heavy half inch. Uh, that's gonna be perfect. So now what we have to do, um, just looking at this swinging around like that, 
We can either start working this end piece in, which I don't think would be the right direction just yet. We need to take and establish this bottom piece, get something mocked up. There's a seat belt retractor unit that sits in here, so we have to cover that up. Uh, that kind of increases the width of the doors because I want nice streamlined lines. You start creating bulges and panels and stuff, you know, in addition to the long streamlined lines, it's gonna complicate things, taking more time. As I mentioned, we want to get this car done for the summertime, so uh, we have to make a few concessions. Give me a few minutes. I'm going to take and bend up the lower section. It's not as complicated as this upper one was, so you've seen how that works. We'll get the lower one bent, and I'll bring you guys in when we're ready to get it installed. Let me sneak that in there. Okay, so that's looking good, fitting in quite well. Now, I know from their templates that this will work based on the templates when we had the seats in there. I don't want the seats in here in case we damage them. Uh, we could keep test fitting it and all that stuff, but I'm pretty confident with the template we made, so it's in. This bottom is gonna come up just a little bit. We'll get a fastener in there afterwards. Um, maybe now, actually. Give that a squeeze. I gotta see what's going on here. All right guys, so this is all pinned together. Uh, these two screws here, we can leave them in place under the two top ones, one bottom one, and this panel can come out and we can work on it on the table. Uh, in regards to this bottom piece, I didn't show on camera how we went about bending it. It's pretty straightforward. It basically comes down like that and down. Uh, this upper piece, yeah, that was more intricate and uh, you guys saw how that went along. So um, I, I try to explain things that need explaining. Uh, some people say I talk too much and I get it. A lot of you guys are great fabricators and you know your way around the tools. But uh, so for some people who are getting started, they need a little bit of a hand up. So uh, that's, what I, that's what I try to look at it. Um, I, don't, I don't go into such detail as screw and screw hole. I think that's pushing it a little bit, but uh, hey, you never know. If you do have a question though, put it down in the comments and I will try to get to it when I can. Oh, a mosquito. Summer's coming. Now when it comes to upholstering these panels, I want to keep things, again, simple. Uh, the other thing is we lost our upholster a while ago, uh, unfortunately. So I'm looking for a new one, but in the meantime, I'm going to take care of these myself. And the way we're going to do it is basically simple wrap on the outside and then bring the ends in. But we can't bring it around a raw edge. Uh, I can't, and the other thing is, if to do it right, you probably put a French seam or a seam through here and have an end piece that's you know separate from this piece and stitch them together. In my case, I'm just gonna wrap it and wrap it around the end and then there'll be an end cover, maybe stainless, aluminum, and cover that up to finish it off. Uh, basically a cover piece. So uh, we'll get one made up out of cardboard shortly. So the next main step, once we get the bottom of the door pinned, panel pinned in place. We'll go ahead and make that cover piece up. Then I have to go and make up little strips, probably half inch material, and weld it around the perimeter, inside perimeter of this face here so that we can wrap the leather around that. And then the cover piece, piece will cover that, uh, that half inch flange and hold everything in place as well in terms of alignment. There might be a fastener down here, one up here, or we could weld a stud on the inside of this cover piece and uh, somehow, maybe from the end over there, get somebody's arm in and do up a nut. See how that goes. So let's get the bottom of the door installed. I've got two vice grips there. I just need the bottom of the door panel. Where'd it go? All right, so here we have the bottom of the door interior panel. Now this front corner took and radiused it up because we have a radius in the bottom corner of the A-pillar. This back one here is square, so a little easier to deal with. But uh, as it turned out, um, uh, we had to radius the front. Now if you want to see how I go about radiusing and maintaining a nice radius around a corner, uh, check out the bottom of the door structure video. I'll put a card up above and you can see how we formed up the structure. Very similar, uh, just a lot softer radius. So uh, you see there, there we go. So let's get this fixed in place. Ah. 
just when you line everything up, the vice grip is set at the wrong setting. Okay, that's good. We'll get one at the front. We will have to make some little adjustments along the way. That's all part of the part of the course. Now, in order to set the bottom of the door space between the interior panel and this molding, this is the driver's side here. Uh, this basically sits in this area, but on the other side. Passenger one hasn't been trimmed up yet, so can't use it. But I need a three quarter inch space between that and the bottom of this. So we'll measure up, make sure that uh, we can actually close the door. All these little details is what people don't talk about when they customize cars. You know, it's just like on TV, it's one, two, bend up a panel, in it goes, and you're finished, right? Hardly. My, that's loud. Okay. Um, oh, we need more screws at the top here. I got so involved with the bottom, so concerned about the bottom space, I forgot these screws. See, with Clecos, you'd have to pre-drill and then get the Cleco in. Here, everything's done in one shot. Now, I'm not putting Clecos down. Nothing wrong with them. This is just what I like to do. I am curious to see if this door will close and how it mates up with this uh, panel back here. Oh, so far so good. But I hear something rubbing. Shoot, I feel something rubbing. To the point that little bit picked the door up. Yes, you can feel that. I'm gonna jump over there and see how it looks. Yeah, yes. Yes is the correct response. We're a bit long, three quarters of an inch too long. So we're taking cut off. I can tell that from over here, you know, just by looking. Uh, we need three quarters of an inch space. I'm taking chop off the top of that panel that we just installed and reinstall it. That should be good. Everything else is lining up. And that screw that we put down in the back there for that back panel, we have to raise that panel up as well. No problem. That's why drills have reverse on them. Just back the screw out. And do it again. Let's see if second time is a charm. Okay, so I just marked the existing holes we had in the top piece. See, screw and screw a hole, gotta get it right. We're gonna make holes in this outer piece that we retrimmed, and we want these holes that we create here to match up with the ones that are in the back. So uh, just mark them, line them up. and nail them. Looking good. See if second time's a charm. Something's binding. What's going on? I gotta squeeze past you guys. It's always fun working on car interiors when you're over six feet.
up like Cirque du Soleil. I don't know, everything looks good. Oh, I know what it is. So I use a number eight screw versus number 10 and number eight kind of came out. So uh, we're gonna put number 10 in there and that will correct the bottom flange from not being attached to the door. That's all it is. Uh, everything else is lining up. This back piece, we gotta bring it up a little bit, line everything up and uh, we're good to go to start forming up the end pieces. Screw diameters matter. I don't think you'd have that problem if you're using Clecos, but then the Clecos this long and I don't have, I probably have about half an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch space between the door and the rocker. I'd never close the door if I was using Clecos. So that's one prime example where screws come in really handy. I'm going to make one small adjustment here. Beautiful. Now, listen, tell me if you hear anything. I'm going to put the microphone inside the car here. Let me know if you hear something. Do you hear that? Let's move the microphone over here to the door strike where there's some tape. That's the only noise that we're hearing is this masking tape that we taped off the strike with. Everything else is perfect. So now we can go ahead and work these ends in. I haven't been sanding, but I sure look like it. Now. I need to pre-drill a hole through this thick material, this pinch weld here, so we can bolt this in. I just took and moved that up. Um, now we have to fix that in place. Voila. Line that up there. Beautiful. This is really exciting. And these are lining up really well. I'm gonna put a screw there to suck that in. It's not a sucky panel. All it has to do is move in. Come here, screw, screw. Ah, here we are. That's a bad screw. I got more bad screws in the corner here. Eventually they do wear out. Have you guys noticed that we're using a, a new piece of photography equipment? Let's see how this one turns out. I've tried a few, but they don't seem to last. They get really, 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 really really hot and uh, boggles the mind how hot a camera can get. I'm gonna make sure everything lines up front to back. Um, <whistles> the bottom piece here gets a little bit wide. We're gonna have to make an adjustment for that. And the way I'm gonna do that is slide that whole piece ahead just a little bit and we'll rescribe it 
and maintain this. Uh, it's 5 8 space at the top here. 5 8 space. All right. Not that you're ever going to see it with the seat mounted in here. Do we move it ahead or not? Yes, we do. We will. Yes, we will. Okay. See, we have one inch at the bottom. And we have plenty of space to open the door. So that's good. So we need to move back about three-eighths of an inch, or move ahead three-eighths of an inch and rescribe it. Put a little mark here, a happy little mark. Let's try this again. How does that look, guys? I think we're right on. That's, that's a beautiful. Yeah, we will have to trim this back up here. That's cool. Top lines up. So with everything lining up here really well, actually, I'm taking grind that back just a little bit. Uh, we may be able to move the bottom forward a bit, and the back, well, it fell into place, so we're good. Okay. So I finished trimming this off. Now we can go ahead and inscribe the end of this profile. Now that matches up with the door. Get some cardboard and make up a template. Okay. This is just an arbitrary placement and I'm describing the inside edge. There I go again, telling you what I'm doing. Hmm. Old habits die hard. Okay, so I've got the template. I've made a whole bunch of marks on it. It's coming in quite nicely. And we're gonna take and turn a one inch flange this way so it mates up with the B pillar, just behind the strike. That's all gonna work out. And one other thing we have to do is add the courtesy light button into this piece uh, once we get it all formed up. Um, yeah, so next step, next step, here we go. We're going to cut up some half inch strips of uh, material and basically form an outline around this end cap or end piece here. And then we'll form up this cap. All right guys, so I just finished installing the half inch strip along the inner edge of these panels here, the front edge here, back edge here. And let's close the door and see how the gap looks. Now they're only tacked in place. Oh wow, that's good. That is lining up at the bottom. So what I did, I took and outlined the perimeter edge of the one panel, took and transposed the cardboard, created a half inch strip, made two of them out of sheet metal, welded one on this side, one on this side. Now I had to do in sections because it was a little bit, it did a little bit of tweaking with the panels to get it to line up perfectly. Even though they were bent the same way after we installed them, they varied a little bit. So took care of that as we welded it in place, we're tacked it in place for now. We'll take and do all the welding outside on the table now that the shapes have been established. So I'll bring you guys in on this side, see what we have, what we're working with. And then what we'll do is create the end covers. But that feels, and oh, this has to come in right there. So it's really close. Uh, this is lining up flush. The tops are flush. And the bottom, yeah, I believe, yeah, that's pretty darn good. Okay, so that's the back edge. A little tacks all the way around. 
and uh, it'll take them off, grind them smooth, weld all that up. There's a bit of a bump there, have to address that, but overall that's good. A little bit of a space there, we'll put a filler in there. We want to wrap the leather all the way around this edge. I can, I can, I can wrap this much, but if you go any further, it gets kind of difficult. And then we'll have a piece of sheet metal. This is oversized. It's going to fit in just like that with a one inch leg coming out all the way down to finish off the gap so you don't see into the panel there. So that's, that's the next step. Let's do it. And the door, same thing. Strip all the way along. We have a reinforcement piece here temporarily. Once the side panel goes in, that won't be necessary, that little wedge there. And uh, the front's been done, corners there, front edge. So we're moving right along really well with these pieces. Now we've got two pieces here. This one goes on the door and this one goes on the, uh, B, the B pillar. So we're gonna have to take and roll that down. The thing with this is, um, yeah, actually that's correct. Yeah, so that line is on the right side. I'm gonna roll that up using a soft wheel. Still have to install the little switch for the dome light. So that's going to go into this edge we're rolling over. We don't need it. You can just work without it, but I think it's a nice, nice touch. It gives it that factory feel. And it's already wired in, so. We're starting to turn this piece into a bit of a banana because of the curvature. When you roll along a curve or you roll a flange up along a curve, you start developing a curve this way. So we'll have to go and shrink that edge. Okay, let me go shrink this. I'll be right back. So I just finished shrinking this edge. Uh, we're gonna go mock this up. I don't know. Not sure if we're gonna have enough space. Okay, let's see if we can get everybody in here so that everybody's happy. Yeah, I guess that'll work. All right, let's see how this looks. Holy moly, she no fit. Too much on the bottom, but hey, we're getting there. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. And that's the whole thing, like, I'll work on this now, we'll make a video of this, but I'm not gonna finish these panels just yet. Uh, that'll come in, in time. There's a few other things I need to address before we get that far. Okay, so I just trimmed some of that material off. Can you guys see what's going on down below? Not really. Let's zoom down here, there we go. So that's coming in quite well, we're interfering there. So cut that off, cut, cut, cut. We'll clean up all those corners. Right now I'm just doing a preliminary fit. And we have, uh, we gotta shrink this a little bit more. Too much curvature. Eyes back. I'm not gonna relocate you guys to the tipping wheel every time. Um, this area here actually, needs to go out to, ma to mate up with this uh, strike area. So we need to stretch from there to there. And we need to shrink some more. Okay, that's getting very, very close. Um, we can probably uh, shrink up here. Okay, we are within 0.5%. I'm kidding. Uh, just in case you didn't know, 
that's coming in well there. Gonna trim things up and not snack her. And that's it. We can get one screw into there just to hold it for us. Now we need to figure out where to place this little switch here. Uh, it can't be down here, there's not enough room. So we'll have to go up and through here. Let me mark that out. And there we have it. So I'm going to create a little piece to stick in there so that we can take and slide this switch through. It's got a little, come on, it has a little square switch on the back with a fastener down below. And that's gonna sit right in there, just recessed. So when the door comes up to this, it's gonna turn the lights off in the car. Okay, so I just finished grinding this piece. We'll get it installed. See that? A little recess created with a little nut start installed and the square hole for the switch. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I took the one out of the Infinity, installed it into this um, piece that we created. So that's a uh, G35 original part right there. Not that I can't create a piece like that or find a nut and install it and put it in, but uh, why you do it twice if it's already there? That's gonna sit right in there just like that. When the button is depressed, it is flush with the face. And we'll have that little screw in there later on. I don't have it on me right now. It's in a box or in a bag. Just double checking everything. Yeah, it's gonna sit like that. This cannot sit out because otherwise the door won't clear. You can see the angle of approach. It's actually sitting a little bit that way, but not enough to interfere with getting in the back seat. So. There you go. Oh, that little bit of material has to come off later. And as much as I'd love to wrap everything up, in here. We can't really do that until, well, we get the ends welded up, these panels trimmed up. There's a lot of work left to do. You can see I can't quite close the door because that top little area that I scribed is interfering with us closing the door. Uh, we'll pick things up later on once I basically have all the ends welded, ground smooth, and we're fitting it into the car for the final time before upholstery. I'd like to close this door for you. So that means we're gonna have to lose. Take two. Take one, I couldn't close the door because of this piece and that amount of material we had to take and cut away. It's quarter inch, but it was enough to prevent us from closing the door. It's not sitting right. So this will be addressed later on. I don't feel like getting out again, but you can, quiet. But you can see the armrests are all lining up really well. Front to back, there'll be an aluminum insert here that'll kind of go up and uh, it'll, it'll really dress the interior up. Continue on from the front there. So we have to top the door to finish yet, a lot of work. We'll get these parts welded up, ground smooth, ready for upholstery. Might do a pre-assembly on the interior yet. Well, we should do it because if something doesn't fit, we can adjust it before it's upholstered. Good, all right. So I've got the final screw in place so we can take and rescribe this end cap. We're gonna take and wrap this section here with leather, wrap the end around, make an end piece here wrapped in leather as well, and it'll be attached covering up that big hole in the end here. Uh, we have a notch for the door latch. Uh, we still have a little bit of work to do to blend uh, the Infinity's um, door panel top into the steel one we created. And I've also been working on uh, trim piece here. This is going to be stainless, uh, maybe aluminum, just brushed aluminum. And in this we're going to have our power windows, two front power windows, power locks, unfortunately no power mirrors. We're going to have a, a kind of a classic looking mirror. I was thinking of a bullet style, but they're a bit small, something a little bit larger. You'll see when we uh, get them in. So that's going to sit right up in there. 
and that'll roll over on the end, attach there. So that's going to finish off the doors. Uh, we have a speaker down there, you can see that, and the garnish molding has been shrunk down to the smaller window. So that's fitted on with tape at the moment. One screw at the front, tape at the back. Way to go. Before I show the inside, let's describe this one more time. Yeah, that's right. Just stepping back about a quarter inch from the outside edge so that we have a little bit of leather exposed. Okay. Oh, you can use your finger to do something like this or you can get a kind of one of those divider gauge types type of things and line up along the edge there and scribe that with a metal edge or with a, with a sharp point I should say. But uh, in this case here, we're going to be wrapping with leather. It'll give it kind of a soft appearance. So Sharpie works just as well. Uh, I also have to trim off the excess material here like that. Very good. And the bottom we're going to take and chop it off right there. So that's gone. That's gone. There we go. So let's uh, go into the car. Well, you guys can go in and I'll show you where we stand with all that stuff. All right, so I'm taking you guys off the pod, a tripod, and show you what's going on here. A little bit dark because we've primered all the panels. That there piece is kind of swung out. It uh, needs to be refined yet, trimmed up. We got the passenger door fitting up, and as you can see, we've got this piece here. It's not looking too bad. I can't close the door because I've trimmed off the excess material off of that, but uh, you can see to get you in here, you can see the trim that goes and extends back along the armrest. There's no power window controls because these windows here are fixed. They will not go down. Uh, in terms of simplifying things, we are on a timeline for this project and uh, with the extra power window packs, it just adds to the complexity. You know, this is what the customer, me, wanted and that's what we're gonna be running with. So that's as far as I can close the door because uh, we will have an issue with that piece of sheet metal there. Still trying to get used to this new camera, so it's a bit, bit different. But as you can see, blocking is well underway. We're just about there. Go over everything one more time, seal it up, and we can get her into the booth and shoot this girl. Uh, that doesn't sound good. We can paint this car and we can get her into the booth and paint this car. All right, so we've got the trunk lid here. We've got the safety release. Cylinders are hooked up. So that'll be pinned once uh, everything's painted, finished. Uh, we have our infinity style spare toolkit here, as well as the spare underneath. So all that stock, all these trunk liners should technically go back but uh, we'll do that later on after the car is painted. So close the trunk. So you can see the gap is really nice all the way around. So that's coming in. And on the passenger side, that there end panel is just about done. Uh, we need to take and again trim off the excess material there. You can see the black line and this panel needs to be trimmed back a quarter inch to allow it to sit properly. I think I can close the door, but it, it uh, hangs up down below here. So once that's trimmed off, we can get it closed all the way. Right, you can hear the sheet metal kind of, kind of hitting. So there we go. Ooh, ooh. yeah. Ooh, that's a big bee. Check it out. Where'd he go? He's fast. See him? Huge bumblebee. I can't even keep up to him. So once we get these end caps of the doors trimmed off, we're going to put them aside, take the interior out, put all those panels aside so that we can prep the car for paint. Next time you see these interior panels are going to be ready to be installed. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Catch the next one.